All right, ready to go again. Okay, I got my oil pump gaskets here, your SNS ones. SNS says you always got to use their gaskets. Yeah, whatever. Get the holes line up as you need, and you can use any gasket. Doesn't matter what they say. But we're going to use their gaskets. What the hell? So it gives us a new key, which we might use, might not use. It's a brand new pump already. We already got new keys. A new snap ring sitting here. We'll probably modify that, but we'll see. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we got our gaskets. Okay, just like any other gasket, don't they? Okay, what happened to the other gasket we already had out? Okay, this is a James stock gasket, stock shovel head gasket. This is SNS gasket. So, what's the difference? We have these two holes over here. The little one's chain oiler. Those all line up. We don't have this hole right down here. We don't have this hole over here. These two holes aren't here. These two here line up good. Those are hole, 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 no slots. So those all line up there. We get the blow off hole up in here and then we got the crossover right there which separates these two cavities. Okay, so how many of those do we really need? Pull out your pump. Put your gasket on there. Okay, those don't do anything. We're not using them. See, blank. Don't need those. Those holes there, don't need those either. They're gone. We need all the mounting holes. We have the four holes right here. Yep. And we have this hole right here. And we have the slot right here. The slot goes completely across, so we don't need that in there either. Okay, what's that tell you? That means you don't need that gasket. You can use this gasket right here. See, everything lines up. You get the same holes. Doesn't matter what SNS says you need. Use your brain. It all lines up the same. You don't need their stupid gasket. Well, we're going to use it anyway. We have it. Now this one here, you do the same thing on the cover. So there you go. You got this big ass void in here. Whoopee. You got one hole right there. And you get this one big hole right here. That's it. Guess what? The stock Harley gasket has those same holes in it too. <laughs> there you go. So much for having to use SNS gaskets. Now if you have a high volume pump, you definitely need SNS gaskets. That is for sure. They are different. But if you got a standard SNS, you can use Harley gaskets. But you always double check. There are different manufactured gaskets out there, so you always double check. Alright, enough lessons. Time to work. Okay, so not too far along. We need our worm gear. Make sure worm gear fits on shaft. It's a lot easier to deal with this now than later. Appears to fit on shaft. Goes on there really good too. So okay, fits on there real nice. Got the key in there. Everything looks bitching. Okay, make sure that you have the big beveled edge goes against the edge down there. Okay, that looks good. Next thing is make sure you got six teeth. You can try counting these teeth like that, or you just go on the side and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the late one. We're good. Okay, the big gear. That one. When you have six tooth here, you got 24 tooth here. If you have five tooth here, you got 25 tooth here. Make sure it's 24 tooth. That speeds up the oil pump. That's how you get a high volume pump when you go to an SNS. It's not all these gears because these are all identical to Harley. It's when you put this in there you get faster speed. But guess what? This is stock Harley too. It's just 73 and later. So as long as you got a 73 and later pump, there's no upgrade. It's the same, this pump's the same as any other pump. The difference is this pump's made out of higher quality material. And the way they where well, they have the blow-off valves down inside in here for your pressure relief might be slightly different than Harley. That's the change, not the gears. So there you go. All right, so next thing I want to check is make sure this fits in the hole, no problem. 
appears to fit in there pretty good. It looks like we got a decent amount of protrusion on that, which is good. If it was flush, it'd be something wrong. Okay, that seems to fit really good. Make sure this clip spins nicely here. See how it does not spin? That means it's good. It's nice and tight. Always make sure that this is 180 from your keyway. And that's good. Now you always have to use this style clip here and not the snap ring because the snap ring has that built up edge. And the screw right here, shock goes in it. You don't have room for the snap ring. So what happens is the snap ring catches right on that right there and causes problems. So don't use snap ring on the outer one. Now you can run this on either side, but this is a pain in the ass to put on. These are pain in the ass to put on too, but this is harder. But you can put it on over here. It, it does fit. It does the same job. It's up to you. So there you go. All right, so all this is good. These are quarter 24 thread hardware. This is quarter 24 case. So that all matches. I already checked all these holes before, so I know they're good. All right, so next thing is to put this thing together. You already got a new seal in here because it's a new pop. Okay, where's my gasket goop? Gasket goop. Gasket goop is called gasket cinch. Some people like it, some don't. Guess which one I am. Now this crap dries up. It dries into these little rubberized crap here. What's nice about this stuff is it breaks up and kind of goes away. When it's got 15 layers like that, it doesn't break up as easy. When you have little thin areas like this, it breaks up and goes away. So that's why I like it. It dissipates and goes away, but it still seals. Silicone don't go away. It just puts globs in there and stays in there and doesn't break up. It causes all kinds of problems. Plus it's way thicker than what you need. I'm going to put a little bit of the case slip over here. Got to refrain from doing too much because the owner doesn't want gasket goop all over his motor. He just paid for it, all that fancy polishing. So we put just enough on there to do what we need to do. The cover, I'm going to goop it up. This stuff has a little ball thing you use here. Spreads on real nice and easy. Remember there's gears right in here, so try to stay off that area. Stay on the outside edges of the hole, you should be good. The center doesn't really do anything, so you don't have to do anything there. Simple. See this gasket here, goes on there. You get this thing up. I like using my gasket board instead of my fingers. But if you don't have a gasket board and you're too lazy to use your workbench, or something else, you can just do it like this. It still works. It's a little harder, that's all. At some point you got the hole on the way you just did it. Boom, like that. Now if you wait until it gets tacky, it'll actually stick to itself. When it's still wet, you can move it around without tearing it. Once it sticks to itself, if you lift it up, it tears the sealer. The sealer doesn't work anymore. Okay, put that on where you want it to be. And put a thin layer on. So you don't need much. Once the paper turns color, it's coated. You don't need to have a big wad of it on there. Only stupid people put stuff on you don't need. There you go. Line that hole up there a little bit better right there. Okay, it's stuck on there, good. That's ready to go for installation, which won't be right this minute, but get it up out of the way. Should be good. Okay, now I'm gonna goop up this gasket here. This time we're gonna use the gasket board. You know what I call the gasket board? It's a board and I got gaskets on it. 
You can see how many layers of gasket cinch I used over the years. It's quicker this way, see? I don't get so dirty also. Flip it over. Do the other side. You let it get tacky for a couple minutes and you can stick it right to the case. It's already tacked off by now. So do that a few minutes ago. All right. But I'm in a hurry, so I'm going to do it right now. And I have all day. It helps to put on the correct direction, it helps to line up the holes. All of that stuff is optional. We have a problem already. What gasket should I just throw in? Did you tell me I should grab the wrong gasket? Probably. What did I do with the uh, paperwork? Don't see the paperwork. What did I do with the plastic baggie? There it is. Ah, dumbass. Wrong gasket. See, it says 92 and up. That means these don't work. The hole pattern is too wide on the bottom. That's how I could tell it wasn't going to work. Okay, so these gaskets cannot be used for this application. With the slots, you don't notice that. When you pull the gasket up, see how it tears it off a little bit? That's the sealer. Okay, we can reapply that. Good. Now these are good for another job, but not this job. Wrong gaskets. Dumbass. Pick the wrong ones. Gaskets. S and S gaskets. Oh, the one that says 36 to 91 is probably the one that I should have grabbed. I'm pretty sure that's probably the one I'm supposed to use. Imagine that. Let's see, that's a back paper gasket only. I'm going to use this one. There's your high volume gaskets. They look different. You don't use them. Okay. I'm going to use these ones. 36 to 91. That might fit my year. I'm pretty sure 1978 is in there somewhere. Could be. Okay. Look at that. Guess what we get to do now everything we just did. So now I get to redo it. Where's my goop? Goopus! Okay, now you can reapply this over the old stuff because it will melt the old stuff a little bit and reseal it. mess again too just like I did before. Get 
Yeah. So I'm going to reapply this one too. And the difference in the uh, gasket hole pattern on the bottom is uh, it's either 50 or 100 thou. I forget which one it was. It's not much. It's just enough to be different. And the reason they did that in 92 was because they made the oil pump gears slightly bigger. So they had to move the pump apart a little bit to make room. So if you use a 92 pump, you have a higher volume pump than an earlier pump. Look at that, the same pattern. Ooh, look at that. Okay. I'm going to get to do this one again. Oh, you're not even watching me either. Look at that. Look at that. You could have been watching this whole time. Uh, good video guy. Not keeping up with the mechanic at work. Alright. Back to work. Let's try it again. Look at that. The holes line up this time. Amazing. Look at that. See? Lower holes line up perfectly this time. Not like the other time. There you go. Helps to pay attention. Okay, now. Gas can pull over my fingers. Get that off. Okay, a little assembly lube. Okay, now we're going to put our pump together. First thing you do, you put a little bit of assembly lube in the keyway slot. And you put a keyway in it. Or a key, not a keyway, but put a key in a keyway. Okay, those ports are all laying over here. Okay, there's our little key right there. I don't know if you can see that. Goes in there like that. Before you find your gear, we want the one that has a keyway in it. And there's two different gears. See a fat and a skinny one. The skinny one is for pressure, and the fat one is for return. So we're gonna. This is the pressure side on the outside. So put the key in there. And it goes in, see? Wipe off the oil. Flip it around. Put oil on this side now. Yeah. I'm going to rag where I get to it. Get more oil again. Plus, you want some down here in a pump shaft, too, a little bit. Okay. Now, here's your oil pump. So, you got the big fat area. You know, not quite so fat area. You got a seal right there that's dry right now. By the time that shaft gets down, you'll have some lubricant in there. There you go. Okay, you rotate that around until you got access to the key right here. So now you can slip the key in. You hold your finger over here to keep the shaft from moving. Find another key. You stick it in there. Now, if you got real dinky fingers, you can stick it in there and do it. My fingers don't work too good that way anymore. They get fatter and wider over the years from being crushed. So, use a pair of pliers to get in there. 
you hold it like that, stick it in there, drop it in and go. Now if you have magnetic pliers, the key comes back out. So I demagnetize my stuff. The last thing I want is magnetic tools. Very bad. Magnetic tools hold all the grit and chips and junk and dirt that you don't want in your motor. Plus you can't do this because the key would come out with this. So it has two problems. Okay, now you take this and you stuff it in there. Before I go any deeper, I'm going to put a little oil in here. That way that gear will be pre lubed when I stuff it in the hole. And the tricky part here is putting this in there and having the key not lift up and go like they always want to do. I think I got it. Ooh, I got that one first shot. That was pretty good. See, you usually got to take the screwdriver on the back side, hold it down, the key down as you put the gear on it. This one worked out good. I didn't have to. Okay, now you rotate this around until you got this where you can get access to it when you put it in the case. That'd be the next thing. The whole time I've been holding my finger over here so it doesn't slide out. Okay, now I go ahead and put the oil on the two shelves that are left here. Put a little bit of oil like that on there. <clears throat> I take the gear, slide it across the shaft, and drop it in the hole. That pre loops the gears because you got extra oil jammed in there. Okay, then you flip it around and do the same thing on this side. There's lots of ways of doing the same thing, but you know, do what works for you. This is what works for me. Make sure they rotate freely. It does. Okay, that's where it belongs. The gasket's already on the case, remember? So I'm going to put a little lubricant on the shaft here because we're going to go into a long bushing. It has no, no oil on it right now. If you put too much oil on here, it all slides down, gets where the gasket surface is, and then the gasket won't seal very well. So just a little bit's all you need. Let me carry it away. Okay, you slide on in there, but not quite all the way. We have to get the key in there. <clears throat> That's gonna be hard to show much here because I'm be blocking the view. I don't have access to a C in there too much either. So you only go in there about that far. Notice I don't have the worm gear on the shaft here. Because <clears throat> if this is on the shaft, you can't rotate this damn gear to get it to go in there. So you can see what the keyway is. So you put the gear on there where the key is. Now the sharpest part of the tooth is you want out. Okay, that's where it wore before. This one here might be slightly less chamfer. I'm going to use it this side. Now ideally you want this keyway to be right here. Let's go like that. Now see the shaft can't be sticking out very far or you can't get the gear in there. Now my third hand, which I don't have, has to push this in. Now you always push on the shaft, not the pump. If you push on the pump, the shaft, the gears will slide out, the key will drop out in there, get all jammed up. You go to put on, it locks up the pump, you beat it with a big hammer or tighten it real tight and it jams the, the key in there where it don't belong and you got a big mess. Easy rewards you by costing lots of money. It's probably best that you don't do it that way. Unless you want to. Okay, slot in. Not quite all the way again. Okay, now we have access to put the key in. You see the key slot right there. You rotate the gear around until it lines up too. Just like that. And the two line up down there, see? Now for the fun part. You get to shove the key in. And you gotta put that clip on there. Both of those are a pain in the ass. Okay, so we use the pliers here to hold the key, which is right here. I should have the old key over here somewhere. It's just still a new key. Nope. Okay, we're gonna use a new key. <clears throat> now when you hold the key, you only want to hold part of the key. Just hold right on the outer edge here of it. Then you can kind of slide it in <clears throat> is the trick. Now obviously you have to hold it 90 degrees like that. You have access. 
I'm actually going to turn it about that far so I can angle it in. Okay. Of course, I'm working a dark hole right now. So I need light. Okay, so I got the key where it started in, but it's not going just yet. So it's laying in there, but not quite ready to go on. So now I'm going to go ahead and hold it and then try to rotate this gear a little bit and push the key and it should slide right in. That's if I'm lucky. I think he's a wrench, use your finger, doesn't matter which. There it goes. You hear it go click. Okay, so once the key is in, like it is right now, I'm going to go ahead and shove this whole thing in and put the pump all the way in. But first you got to put a couple of um, screws in here because see the pump is laid down right now see and once you start hitting that gasket it starts to stick especially if you put sealer on the oil pump face which I did not do so so these are the two bolts that go in there I don't Loctite this stuff either. If you tighten it down, you don't need to Loctite it. This thread doesn't feel very happy with your bolts going in there. They're not, they're not very happy with each other. It's got pressure going in. But it's even pressure, so I didn't get any worse or uh, better. Okay. So I haven't tightened this yet, but I'm close to it. I'll wait until we get this together all the way before we tighten those up. Might have to take it all apart. Okay, where's that snap ring I put over here? Here it is. Now, this snap ring here has been used slightly. This one has not been used at all. So see the gap between the two little fingers sticking up there? This one's almost next to each other. You get a little gap on that one. So this one's already overextended itself and will be loose on the shaft. If it's loose on the shaft, it spins on the shaft. And that means the key can come out. Or it can wear it out or whatever. So what I do is I rebend these things. Nine times out of ten, after you put this one on, it'll be bent that much or more. If, it's, if it spins on the shaft, it's no good. You have to have to torque on it, tension, so it doesn't spin. <coughs> so what I do is I take a pair of little channel logs, and I bend them. If you bend them too much, they snap off. So I bent that one down. Over here, bend this one down. Now they're both bent. Now you're oval-shaped. So to make it round again, I squeeze it from the side like this. You now these two here can't be on top of each other when you do that. It doesn't help. Okay. So now you can see how they're a little bit overlapped with each other, but not too much. Okay. Now we're going to try to put this on. Now there's a sharp edge and a dull edge. These are stamped out, so there's a difference. This is the sharp edge here. It's hard to tell. My fingers are so full of goop right now, I can't feel the difference. Okay, I use a pair of 90 degree pliers, snap ring pliers. Makes the job a lot easier. Okay, now I can look at it better. If you look at it in the light, you can see how this side here is a little bit sharper. Backwards. Okay, now you want to try to get this on the shaft and open up as little as possible. As soon as it starts to go over the shaft, stop and push on the screwdriver the rest of the way. Easy works. Now, the other thing you want to do is rotate the key way over. See, right now the key is not all the way in. Let the screwdriver run off too. 
Let's see, screwdriver, screwdriver. Who stole my screwdriver? There it is. Okay, shove the key all the way in the gear. Rotate the gear around 180. Now go ahead and try to put this on. Okay, it popped right up on there. Make sure it's all the way on with your screwdriver by pushing on it. Appears to be on there all the way. Next thing you want to do is make sure it's tight. Tight. So we're good. So there's a key on there. If you see a big gap between the two ears there, you know it's gonna you know it's loose. You know it's a try looking at it. Okay, so you put the screwdriver on here and you push on it. And if it doesn't move by easily on by itself, you can slide it if you push on it, but it's not, it doesn't want to just fall. So it's got drag on it. You can hear a little bit there maybe too. You see how much free play you got on these things? Alright, so that one's all stuck on there. Now we can go ahead and torque this down on this side. Put the cover on, torque it on. And then you gotta make sure the oil pump rotates. If the oil pump doesn't rotate, it's locked up, then you gotta take it all back apart and find out what happened. Because something is wrong. Okay. I like the motor out of the stand so I got access to it and I can look at it and see. Okay, now take the oil pump, move it back and forth, and kind of center it up between the two spots. That'd be the happy spot. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to tighten these anymore, so I'm gonna put a good, good torque on those because we don't have access to these again. Let the cover go. Okay, here's our cover. Let's slip that on. I'm not putting any more oil on this thing because I don't want to get on the gasket surfaces. You could put a little bit of gas cassage on the uh, mating surfaces there if you want. I usually just do it on the gasket on this one and only on the lid. So I don't get too much goop in there where I don't want it. The last place you want a bunch of goop is inside your oil pump. So you sparingly use it. Don't flood it in there. how tight that thing is. Washer disappeared. It's supposed to be on there. So who got two washers? Hmm. They all have four head washers on them before. This one's going a little bit tarred, <clears throat> so I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the tip of the threads here. Kind of lubricate them a little bit. It might make it go together a little bit easier. Oh, I need a little washer. I'm going to steal one off this bolt right here. You want to have a washer on here to spread the load. Otherwise it can it does damage to your pump. Take these and kind of smooth them up a little bit. 
if you have an option to move it around a little bit, which is easy to do. Smooth up a little bit. Makes it look a little bit better. Little detail things like that makes a difference. Okay, there's that one. There's you. There's you. There's that one again. Grunt to it. Okay, those are on there pretty tight. See how we don't have access to these Allens here because these are in here. That's why Allens are a bad design up here. Should be a hex head. That, that's the way they make this stuff. Okay. <clears throat> now, ideally this should move with our fingers. Yeah, it does. Keep the pump working. Okay, that's what you want to see. You got a lot of inplay in this thing, <clears throat> which is not the best. See how much inplay you got in that thing? So that allows the key to come out if it wants to. That's why you have the key on 180 from what the clip is on the other side. This bushing here should be sticking through a little bit further. Oh well. Okay, now we go ahead and put the gear on here. There's the key where key's right here on the side, right there, and just push it in like that. Works fine. Now if you got a little bit too much drag to do that, then you go ahead and rotate the motor backwards, and it'll shove it right on. If you go forward, it shoves it out. So, or is it the other way around? Yeah, let's find out. Now forward makes it go in, backwards makes it go out. See, that's backwards, forward goes on. See? That sucks in. Okay, so that goes like that. Now we gotta put the key up over here to drive our cam. It's right there. So we gotta find our key. So the key is for that. Now before you put the key in there, you gotta put the spacer in there. Goes in like that. There's the nut. So where's our selection of parts here? Always appears to be missing stuff when you're trying to do work. So I don't see the key in here anywhere. So instead of hunting around for one, I'll just go over here and grab one off the shelf here. Let's see here, that looks like one right there. Nope, that's a crank pin key. These have a few of them sitting around over here. Except right now when I need one. Looks like a crank pin key. See that won't fit in there. Yep, it does fit in there. There's a no. Too fat. Quite didn't look right. Okay. Here's somebody took all the keys I had. Some of these are even more buried in the bottom of this box here. Don't have time to dig in. Let's go ahead and grab one. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab one. It's quicker. Keys. Oh, we'll be needing that too. That's cam stuff. Keys are right here. Cam thrust washer and keys. Two important containers around here. Cam washers, we're gonna need a little bit. Here's our keys. Skinny one. They don't skinny. Skinny one. There's a skinny one. Skinny one goes in the shaft right here. Hard to do with one hand. Yeah. 
Now you want to make sure that goes in all the way in before you put the gear on there. So you just take a pair of channel locks and use those to put them on, which I don't have out right now. Thought I did. Yeah, they're out someplace. Oh, there they are. I thought I had those out. You just put them on here and squeeze, see? Gear. See if it fits on there. And tap it on the rest of the way. Steel hammer. <clears throat> Just lightly tap it. Okay. I'll tap a little more on that, but I need two hands. Don't get too carried away hitting on it. Hear that get hard? Stop. Okay, that shoves the key in there all the way. And it's all the way on. Okay, where's my nut? Here's my nut. Now this takes a flat style wrench to work that. You can use a three quarter wrench and it rounds off like that, or you have the proper tool. I use this style too. Jim's has one that has a cutout like that. This one works easier. Anyway, it just goes in there, holds it like that, and then tighten it up. It's a left-handed thread. You don't need no stupid Loctite on it. If you tighten it down. And if the gear splits in half, you had a bad gear, so don't worry about tightening it. This will pull 130 foot pounds, so don't hold it on forever. Okay, now after you put it on, rotate the motor and make sure the gear is not wobbling on the shaft. If it is, the key is sticking up too high. It all looks like it's concentric. So the pinion shaft's not going like that, and the gear is not going like that. So that's what you want to see. So let me go over here where <clears throat> well, you can see it a little bit. You can see what we're looking at here. So right there is what you're looking at. You make sure that doesn't wobble when you rotate it. Try not to move the case while you're going around the circle. That's hard to do too, but there you go. You don't need no indicator. You got eyeballs. Okay, that's how you do that. Okay, everything seems to be working freely. Now before you get too far, get some oil pump lubricant on them gear teeth. You don't want to be running these things dry. There's a lot of load on your oil pump, so if you wait until you get oil oil on this gear from the normal way, you'll be dry for quite a while. It'll be hard on it. Spin it through a little bit. There you go. Rag disappeared somewhere. Okay, now the last thing we didn't do was put any of the guts in the oil pump yet. It was over here. So we have springs and check valves and ball bearings and all kinds of crap. We also do our breather screen. That's our tappet screen, also has to be done. Okay, so we have a light spring and a heavy spring. Guess which one controls oil pressure? Okay, here's your ball. Ball controls nothing. It takes a light spring. A little bit of oil in there. A little over here also. We're doing two things with the oil. We put a little bit in there for lubrication and a little bit to hold the parts in. That drops in. That goes on top. Where's our plunger at? Here's your plunger, that's what controls your oil pressure. Here's your spring. Now you can stretch the spring a little bit if you want a little extra pressure, but that only gives you slightly more pressure and it, it, 
limits how much goes to the crank, so I usually don't screw with it. If you have low oil pressure, chances are the pinion bushing over here is loose in the cover. Uh, it'd be this piece right here. It dumps all the oil right out of the crank. That and uh, the valve train stuff's really loose on clawlessness too, like the rocker arms and lifters and all that are bleeding a lot of pressure also. Two things that are bad. Okay, now this tap of screen here, you have a spring that holds it in, and you stick it in. The sharp point goes up, the dull point goes down. That's how it's supposed to work. If you flip it over like that, it doesn't do anything. So it goes up in this hole right here. If the filter doesn't fit in the hole, you got to grind the filter down until it goes in. Sometimes the cases aren't made right. Okay, now we've got three brand new fittings to use, or covers, because he wants chrome ones. Still those ugly ass stock ones. Which were over here somewhere. These ones, he don't like these ones. Can't blame him. Bling on the motor, you want a bunch of ugly ass cat plated hardware. Okay, so these are chromium plated, hex, not allen. If you get the allen ones, they will look like rust. Allen's going to have a hole like that. It's going to collect water and make rust. This is a 12 point. It's nice and shiny. You can see nice chrome. You don't see a rusty hole. So if you're going to put bling on your motor, put bling you can see. And if you want to use a glue on pasties, you can do that too, but I'm not into pasties. So. I don't like a bunch of fake covers on everything. Either make it look nice or don't do it. Now don't forget to put the O-rings in there. That's what keeps the oil from coming out. All three of these are the same on this particular motor. Actually, that is not correct. I am wrong on that. This motor has a different plug up here than what you have here. On 81 and later you have all three the same. On 80 on back, which would be the 70, it's a different size. Okay, we're going to have to go get the right one. I have that. Okay, so this here has to be screwed in here. This fitting's in the way a little bit, so it makes it a little bit harder to get to. So you can't just put a socket on it, it doesn't work that way. Now if you waited to put that in later, you could have done it that way, but we didn't do that. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little dab of oil on there too. That one had a well on the side of it already. Slightly. Okay, so let's go in there like that. Seven sixteen socket goes right in. There we go. See this one works at kind of an angle. You don't tighten it this way, you'll screw it up. Pull out the real wrench for that. Put a good torque on it. Yeah, good and tight. All right, that looks a lot better than stock. See? see how nice those look? Nice hex head up on there. A lot of nice and flat chrome area to look like. Look at a lot of chrome on the side too. Make them look a lot not better. Okay, I gotta get the correct one of this because that one's not gonna work. So we have to go over here and grab the correct one. And it was out earlier. Then I put them back. What a dumbass. Lots of dumbasses around here. 
see how this says 76 to 80. That's the one you're supposed to use. I'm not sure why it's 76, because I thought it went all the way back to 70. So I'm not sure what's up with that. And I'm not sure what the difference between this one and the other one is, because they look the same. Tap it oil screen plug. So there's an oil screen plug. It's not the top of the oil pump. Okay. I don't know why that looks like the same damn one. They look very similar, don't they? Hmm. Spring does not fit in that one. Don't fit in that one either, so... Threads the same. That fits in there. That one does too. Some of these used to be different heights. Same height. I see no difference. I'm going to use this one. Like I said, over the years they had different threads and different heights and different diameters. Now over in a check valve in the spring, uh, the spring actually goes up inside here. And if it doesn't go up inside of there, it's not good. So that's a problem they have on some of them. But not this one. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the O-ring here so it doesn't tear it and it tightens up. So even though this is not supposed to go here, I'm going to put it here anyway. These are for 84 to 91 is the fitment range. 78, close enough. So it doesn't matter what, what they say. If the part fits, use it. There, it fits just fine. There you go. Looking good. Where's my uh, other fitting at? Okay, these things here, i got to put these in. You're supposed to go right in here. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this one instead of the uh, other stuff. I like using a capillary action green. Because that way it sucks in there and seals up any orifices that have holes in them. I'm putting Loctite on this instead of sealer because I want it to not rotate when you tighten the nut down. The nut being right here in the line. Getting pretty nice looking. Uh, this is an old hex plug. I already got a piece of crap in there already for now. Good, I'll leave that in there. We're going to order up a new plug for the uh, go in here that looks just like the one over here for the oil pumps. But, uh, the Hong Kong Evo motor got the last one I had, so it didn't get put on my order list by mistake. So I'm out. Oh well. I hate it when I don't have the inventory I need. All right, so this is all pretty well done in here. You can see how this oil line fitting now clears the pump. That's why you have it at that angle. So everything clears, no problem. So that's how you do it. Nice and clean. Now if you want an idiot light on the bike, you should be able to go right through here. So I'm pretty sure SNS cover that's made to have an idiot light on there. I'd have to look to make sure. So this customer here, I think he's going to run one, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll find out if he's, he's going to do that. He might put an oil gauge over here too, but who knows. 
I don't particularly like looking at oil gauges. You can't read them going down the road and these are not accurate. And these leak oil out of them, so why have them? So like I said, we might have an idiot switch that comes out of here. We'll see. But for now, that's it for that. So next thing is going to be the cam cover. So let me get cleaned up and we'll get to that next.